Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Curriculum and Instruction. This is April 28th. Um, as I was just telling the folks that are with us today on the, on the Zoom, this is probably going to be our last face-to-face -face course for this, or face-to-face -face class for this course for this semester. Um, Thursday will be an office hour, just from 8 to 9. I'll do just what I've done the last several weeks and do kind of an office hour. Um, we're going to talk accommodations and modifications today. Um, then I'll let you kind of run with that. So if you have questions on Thursday, I'm sorry, stay Tuesday. Yeah, if you have questions on Thursday, go ahead and, and zoom in. And then uh, I'll be available all through finals week, but I won't be at the eight o'clock office hour. I will be available to, to zoom with you whenever you would need to. You just gotta uh, email me or, or text me and I'll leave you my phone number as I said. In fact, uh, let me do that right now before I forget. So if you got a piece of paper or whatever, or wanna write it down, my phone number, if you want to, if you have questions during this week and you want to text me, is 660-254-4424. 660-254-4424. Um, just tell me who you are as you're texting because I probably probably don't have you in my phone, um, so you don't get one of those like new phone who dis kind of text back. But um, so that's the the plan for that. Um, again, I'll be here on Thursday from eight to nine. You don't have to be, but if you have questions, you're welcome to do that. Some things that I noticed about the, um, the preliminary lesson plans that people turned into me, um, actually most looked great. They, uh, everything was in the order that it should be. Um, two things to watch when you go back and kind of check over this stuff before you turn it in at the end. I mean, uh, some of you weren't quite finished and that's fine. You'll have time to finish it. Um, when you're looking at your objectives or your I can statements, um, some of you had way too many, um, way too many. If you're looking at a 45 minute lesson plan, you're looking at three to four objectives, probably max. And that, that's about all that you're going to be able to cover, if even that, during that time. Um, some of you, not necessarily folks here right now, but some of the folks in the sections that I teach were, were having uh, like 10, 12, 15 objectives for their 45 minute plan. And that's, that's, that's a unit's worth of objectives. That's not a lesson plan. So do kind of think about that as you're going through. And the other thing is, um, and I'm, I'm sure for most of you, it was just that you were turning the pr preliminary plan and didn't, didn't worry about it too much. But don't forget that you need to identify your instructional based, uh, I'm sorry, your research based instructional strategies. So if you're doing um, like a stand up, hand up, pair up in your, in your lesson planning, you should remember to identify that as a cooperative learning strategy as identified by Marzano, you know, something like that. So, so do, um, do make sure that you're identifying the instructional strategies that you're using as you write out your activities. And um, it might help to refer to Antonetti's Cube, uh, the uh, PLC2 connection. You can kind of um, drive your idea for high order thinking and activity based on that cube, um, or you can use some of the other stuff that you've seen too. So those would be my pieces of feedback for all of the, the things that I've got. And again, not necessarily just for this section, but for all the sections that I've seen. So any questions about that as, you, uh, as you've been, been doing and, and working on that? I think the, the one final piece of advice I would give you is that um, last year, um, I ran into a couple of folks that were just determined that they would have like the perfect lesson plan. Um, it doesn't need to be perfect. It just, for this one, it just needs to be done. We just want to make sure that you actually know how to construct a lesson plan. Perfection of them will, A, never happen, but B, um, tuning them up and all that, that'll come later on in, in your, in the different classes that you take. So uh, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're looking for the perfect plan or whatever, yeah, maybe, maybe remove yourself from the perfect idea and just do it so that you can kind of um, get some feedback and get it done. That's the, that's the general plan. Okay. So for today, um, another thing that I would say on that is that many of you talked about not knowing what to do for accommodations or modifications. Well, that's perfect, because that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, in the Hunter plan, as you look at it, like the papers in front of you, so the left side is the regular, quote, the regular lesson plan, all the things you're gonna do in the framework of the classroom. And the right side of that plan is devoted for accommodations and modifications. Um, if you're a 5E person, there's a section on top of the plan that's, that's dedicated to accommodations and modifications. And quite honestly, I'm not familiar enough with the other templates that we threw out at you to know where they are, but you're on the hook for providing accommodations and modifications for at least one student. And I'll show you how you're gonna do that here in just a few minutes. But let's, let's kind of talk accommodations and modifications 
uh, just as a general overview, let me share my screen here. This PowerPoint is available in the week six module. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I think it's literally called Accommodations and Modifications PowerPoint or something like that. But it's, it's in the week six module. So um, I'll, I'll kind of run through it and then you'll always have, uh, you'll have access to it too. Um, so if you're going to talk accommodations and modifications for student learning, there's essentially, well, you can read this bottom part too. Various disabilities, students who are gifted, uh, English language learners, students with other special needs, they're not included under special education. Um, you may have students that aren't, um, that aren't special ed tracked, but, but nonetheless, you will recognize or through conversation with them or with parents or with both, that they, may, they might need some extra, extra help in the classroom. There are things that are on the docket uh, that, are, that are called 504 plans, and they're not for special education students, but they are sometimes for students that have either permanent or temporary disabilities. So all of these things will kind of come your way in the framework of your classroom teaching, and it'll be your job uh, in consultation with the special, special education folks or sometimes a uh, counselor or whoever sets up your 504 stuff to make sure that you've built your accommodations and modifications into your classroom planning. So that includes within the framework of the lesson plans and all the activities that you do within the class. Um, later on in your college careers, you'll be exposed to more ideas on how to make this happen, but we just wanna introduce these concepts to you in this particular class. One other thing I would say about that is if you have what's called an IEP for a student, an individualized education plan or protocol, um, that's set up by special education and all that. It's a document that comes to you. That's a legally binding document. So if you choose to not do things that are on that document, that could come back to you. Um, that, that comes back on you. Most likely, uh, it'll come back on you in the school, and most likely the school is not going to choose to deal with you as a teacher if you don't follow IAPs, right? So, so it's important to understand um, that, that these things are not only morally, um, they're not only morally and ethically the right thing to do, they're also legally the right. Okay, so, um, so the basic assumption that you need to start with in your classroom is that all students can learn, no matter what track they're on, no matter um, uh, if they have intellectual disabilities or learning disabilities, if they're physically disabled, all students can learn. Um, now, your job will be to accommodate and modify in some cases so that the students can demonstrate their learning to the best of their ability. That, that's your job. How can you allow your students to learn to the best of your ability? And that's why you put these accommodations modifications in because we understand that not all students learn equally not all students learn in the same way one of the biggest shockers for me and I don't know why in retrospect but one of the biggest shockers for me in the first year that I taught was that um, not all students learned in the same way that I did and it was a real struggle for me because I taught in the way that I learned so I, I was a big fan of note-taking when I was in, in school loved taking notes I had my little uh, multicolored pen. I don't know if they still have that, like a four color pen and you, whichever pen color that you want, you kind of click on it, it'll go. I would highlight stuff, I would take it back and I would rewrite it, you know, at, at, at home and, and highlight it and all sort of things. And it shocked me that most students did not learn that way. But that's the way that I taught for, for most of my first year, maybe even most of my second year too, before I learned different ways to adjust. Um, so not all students learn equally, not all students learn in the same way but it is your job to give students an opportunity, an equal opportunity to learn. Um, stuff that accounts for differences. Sometimes the, the, the old phrase that they're just not ready, sometimes literally they're just not ready. There's developmental readiness issues. If you're an elementary teacher, that will probably um, be an issue for you more so than if you're a secondary teacher. Um, the experiential background, um, what kind of experiences do they have in their lifetime that would have prepared them or not prepared them for what they're supposed to learn in your class? That kind of goes back to your ecology classes, uh, the cultural differences, the experiential background. Um, if you remember from those ecology classes, you know every student, whether they want to or not, brings that home life that they've experienced into your classroom. They just they can't quite leave it at the door as much as you want them to. And so you got to take those things into account as well. Um, individual learning styles, disabilities, all that sort of thing. Um, and so the way that we start to provide students equal opportunity to learn is to make appropriate, that's a big deal too, appropriate instructional or environmental accommodations and modifications. Um, why do we do that? Um, well, first of all, why are we doing this? Uh, we're going to talk just quickly about strategies and techniques. Um, 
that's the general purpose of this is to get get you started on the idea that, that in the framework of every plan that you make there's stuff that you can do to um, facilitate learning for all of your students um what to say about this one i don't know if you can remember this mindset that one size fits all doesn't work you're probably going to be in good shape so I don't know how eventually you're going to sit down and design your lesson plans as you as you work in uh, your classroom environment. Um, later on, there's a slide that talks about you should stop along the way and accommodate as you're going through the lesson plan. And I I will I that's not how I worked. So what I would do is I would design my lesson plan first, the the overall plan for everybody in the classroom. Then I would go back through the plan and kind of think about the students that I would need to modify for. Okay, so you do it how you want. Some people kind of start and then modify as they go. And some people do the whole thing first and then go back and, and, and modify and ac accommodate as they, as they see fit. Um, okay, so I've thrown around the terms accommodations and modifications. And in general, this is the difference. I don't know that I'll read through all this. So basically accommodations are something that you can do to help a student learn that does not change the overall um, complexity of the lesson. So if you're wanting a student to think in a high order manner uh, and you, you want them to analyze things based on Bloom's taxonomy, right? If, you, if you've chosen to make that the high order thinking that you're gonna do, an accommodation does not change that in any way, shape or form. Your student is still going to analyze uh, whatever you want them to analyze in that model. It's just that there's an accommodation that you might have to make. Perhaps the student, um, has some sight issues. So one of the accommodations that you would make for that student is you might move that student closer to the, 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 the projector, closer to the screen, closer to the board. Uh, you might provide that student with um, large type notes. You, know? you might provide that student with um, um, a buddy that can help him or her interpret what he or she is seeing, okay? That's an accommodation doesn't change the complexity level of the assignment or of the activity at all, but it does help that student process in a more effective way. Okay, that's an accommodation. Modification is, um, well, I will just read this paragraph. It's an alteration that's made when students are unable to participate fully in general instruction or testing, even when accommodations are provided. Um, and so what that might mean is that you call for, um, the rest of your class to do again the analysis activity but there is one student in your class that um, has an intellectual disability and so rather than moving that into the high order thinking realm you might do it in a in a, uh, a lower version of the um, of bloom's taxonomy so rather than having an analysis you might have that student answer a series of multiple choice questions about um, how events um, were uh, unfolded in, in a, if you're talking about a historical event, you might say the, the student might put the events in order that they happen, okay, as opposed to analyzing the reasons behind the event. And that would be a modification that you would make that still is in the framework of the assignment or the assessment that you're doing, um, but it, it's not as the same as a, 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 the same complexity. Um, let's see. This is, this, this is a slide that I, I'm not 100% on board with. It says accommodations and modifications are considered and made in the planning process rather than at the end as add-ons. Well, maybe, and I think I understand the spirit of what was being said here, but I mean, if your process is you, you construct your lesson plan and then after you're done with the lesson plan, you go back and try to figure out based on your individual students how you're gonna accommodate for them, I don't see any issue with that. I, I don't think you necessarily have to stop as you're moving through and get everything done so that you're done with both things at the end. Um, so this is the, the parallel plan. I don't know that you can actually see this. It's so, so small. Um, and again, just, just in case you're not aware of where you put this, the, 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 the regular lesson planning goes on the left side of that, and then this accommodations modifications, uh, is, is they're, they're put onto the right side. Okay, oh, let me make that smaller. Oh, that's too small, sorry. Um, okay, so we talk about modification strategies. There are different elements in the classroom. There's teacher control elements, um, and you as a teacher can develop a menu of accommodations or modifications. Um, some of the things that you as a teacher can control 
physical and social environment for your for your students. So if you know that uh, you have Timmy in your classroom, and Timmy does is a really intelligent kid, and um, Timmy can fully do all of the stuff, but when you put Timmy with a group of his peers, he tends to be unfocused. And so you've had conversations with Timmy and maybe with the counselor or maybe with Timmy's parents, and you know that um, one of the accommodations you want to make for Timmy, and remember accommodation doesn't um, change the complexity of the assignment, it just helps the student process better. Um, one of the things you can do is you can um, seat him individually as opposed to in a group. That's, that's an alteration of the physical environment, okay? Um, Information presentation methods. We talked about if you are having students take notes on a particular subject and a student doesn't see as well as some other students, you might provide that student with a copy of the notes already um, or a, a fill in copy of the notes that are wider print or bigger print. Um, what else? Um, you might um, accommodate based on time factor. If, if there is a student that you know does not perform well in the crunch of a 45 minute time to get an exam done, you might provide extra time for that student. That's an accommodation. It doesn't fundamentally alter anything about the assignment other than the time that students have. Here's some other ways you can do it um, in your presentation of information. Uh, we've kind of talked about some of those. You can go back through and, and look at that. I don't need to um, take the time to do that today, but you can look for those things. Environmental and time factors, um, adjust the size of groups as we talked about, large print as we talked about. Um, student response methods. Um, sometimes students have a, a, a harder time processing in the framework of the time period they've got, so they will ask to record what you're doing in the classroom, and that's a perfectly fine accommodation to make so they can go and listen to it later. Um, sometimes you can have the student uh, dictate responses to somebody that writes down for them, um, and you can set that up. Most of the time, something like that, the dictation part of it comes from special education folks. They'll write that into the IEP that he gets somebody to scribe for him. And, and in general, then the student will go to a different location, have that uh, paraprofessional or other teacher scribe for them and bring the stuff back. Um, again, we talk about adjusting length of the assignment. I, I talk about length of testing times, but yeah, if you have a week for the rest of the class to do an assignment, but you know that uh, Jenny struggles a little bit to get things within the the time frame, you might extend it two or three days. That's a perfectly fine accommodation to make. Um, accommodations do level the learning field. Um, I don't know if John F. Kennedy actually said this, but we're, we're quoting him as saying it, and it's a good quote. All of us do not have equal talent, but all of us should have an equal opportunity to develop talents. That's more what accommodations are about. Um, so, That's a lot to throw at you in a short amount of time. Questions about accommodations or modifications in that way? Okay, so you're gonna be on the hook to accommodate for one student that is coming to you via a list, and I will show you where to find that list. In the course website, in week six, um, if there's a document, it's called Students for Differentiation. So when you click on that, there is a list of, I think, five, yeah, five students, A through E. Um, here they are. You can choose one of these students. I don't, I don't care which one, but on your plan, please do tell me which student that you chose. You can choose any of them, but, but tell me which student that you chose so that when I look at the modifications or accommodations that you've made, um, we can make sure that you're doing it the right way. Um, some of these students will need just straight accommodations. Remember, that's not fundamentally altering the, the complexity of the assignment in any way. And some of them will probably need modifications, which is you might need to change a few things about your complexity level so that students are able to, um, to process more effectively or tell you in a, in a different way what they've learned. But there's five students here. Choose one of those and accommodate for that student based on your own lesson plan. And um, the, the, the plan itself is due, I think I set it on, uh, I think on Friday, which is, is that May 1st? Um, May 1st, 11.59. That's not the be all end all. That's, that's, the, that's the due date for you. And so that, that's a big deal. Don't, don't ignore that. 
but if the plan isn't what it needs to be, if it doesn't live, live up to the competencies, and remember the competencies are what you have to pass in order to, to make it through the course, we still have a full week after that during finals week for me to get that back to you so that you can fix what you need to fix. So even though the due date is May 1st and that's the, the final date, you know, and it's not really the final date, we, we'll, we'll, get you, we'll get you set up and fixed up so that you can pass the course, okay? Uh, I'm not actually, based on the preliminary stuff that I saw, I'm not honestly worried about anybody that I've seen. So um, you guys are doing a good job. Any other questions, anything like that before we let you head out? Okay. Well, again, this is our final official face-to-face -face course for this. I know that, uh, here's the understatement of the millennia so far. Um, I know this hasn't been the easiest semester for you, uh, but I really very much appreciate um, your integrity and stick to and all that sort of thing. I'm sure you've heard this from other teachers too, but I need you to hear it from me. So I really appreciate you guys. I appreciate what you've done and what you'll continue to do. Um, and I look forward to seeing you more often and in the flesh face to face when we come back in the fall. So take care guys. And if you need anything from me, you got email, you got my, my phone number, you can text me. Um, I will be back here on Thursday from eight to nine. If you want to pop in and, and ask questions or, you know, shoot the breeze as you will at eight o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. So um, other than that, you guys are free to head out. Thanks so much for everything that you've done this semester. And I look forward to working with you again. So take care guys. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye.